you must have seen this javascript meme behavior but it's actually not just javascript it happens on all 64 bit floats in fact things like these also happen due to such behaviors people are scared to use floats and end up not using them at all and missing out on optimization opportunities except javascript people who only have floating points to work with yes you guys don't even have integers didn't realize you were walking on landmine till now did you so you really need to understand floats, how and why they work the way they work. Public service announcement. This is a request to dear viewer, kindly subscribe or else I'll cry. Unlike JavaScript, the real languages have both integers and floats. So we only use floats when we are dealing with decimals. But there are ways to not use floats, just use two integers. Represent a fraction p, q where q is not zero and then the value is p divided by zero. But obviously it is quite expensive in itself in terms of memory and operations both and many things like square root inverse square root will be way slower than it is in floating points note that in this case you won't be able to store fractions beyond the limit of p and less than 1 by q so very big and very small numbers are out of range so depending on your use case you might want a custom representation of the numbers you're going to use but other than that floats are mostly better you might think they are slower than integers, but there are dedicated circuits in CPU for float operations. So they are quite fast and sometimes faster than integers. You might also think that floats are quite unpredictable, but they actually are not. They follow uh, IEEE standard and are quite predictable with their rounding errors. First of all, the standard float representation is like this. Simple scientific notation like we are all used to. The precision term is mantissa or significant and there is an exponent to base 2 and this is how it is laid in memory if you are interested this layout is really helpful because that way a lot of circuitry can be shared between int and float comparison there are also some special values like nan not a number plus infinity negative infinity and negative zero these are to handle edge cases like division by zero square root of negative number etc plus zero and minus zero actually behave a little bit differently because of how they are defined in the standard so many times people disable it via f no sign zeros. So when you do something stupid, you can get these results and it makes sense. If you divide by zero, you should get infinity. Helpful tip, in C++ you can speed up float arithmetic by f fast math. Actually, although it technically produces non-spec compliant results, that's mainly because it reorders operations to speed them up, but they are still mathematically correct. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Everyone hates float because of their seemingly random rounding errors. For example, see this. What is this? Because it is JavaScript and those users don't have integers, these are actually floats and not int. And so they mess up like this. So why does this happen? First of all, this is the range of numbers JavaScript floats can store. But obviously we can't store even every integer in this range. That's way more than what the memory can fit. So we can only store them to a certain precision and that is you're right, determined by the size of mantissa that we saw in that diagram. Now, since every number can't be stored, when the result of addition is a number that cannot be stored, we have to round it. And it is done by banker's rounding, which is as follows. And that's why we get this. All right, so now it makes sense why we got this result. 10001 is not representable by our precision, so it gets rounded to 10000. But 10002 is available, so we get that number. To have a visualization, the number of numbers we can use are higher in density the closer to zero we are, somewhat like a bell curve, not exactly though. I'm not sure what it is. And it makes sense, right? Because we are losing a lot of precision bits by trying to represent a big integer like 1000 compared to say two. Okay, makes sense, but how to avoid it? Well, uh, at every floating point, value that we have if we say that it can have a error of epsilon then we can mathematically measure what is the worst case error in plus minus multiply and divide operations and you will notice if you do the math that plus and minus are the ones that really magnifies the error when operated on numbers of different magnitude while multiplication and division remain bounded really well like you can multiply mass of electron with speed of light squared and you'll get quite accurate results but if you add mass of electron with a mass of human you'll get mass of human because mass of electron is negligible here so that's how plus and minus make the errors magnify so what you should do is operate numbers of similar magnitude together and then finally combine them
you can also change rounding methods uh, to these and if you see massive difference in output then that means you are having a precision error and not some other error all right hope you like this video i referenced this book algorithmica by this guy awesome book to read and with that i'll see you next time